The final mock draft of 2021 is on today's show. It's me versus Jason versus Mike. We try out some different strategies. We want to know what you think of our teams. Make sure you weigh in in the comments, like the video, subscribe. And I'm telling you right now, click the bell because something special is happening soon. Enjoy today's episode. Summer is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from HelloFresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. With your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's football time, yeah! <laughs> yeah! I didn't miss it. I was here. How do you put an asterisk in your actual football time? Like a preseason asterisk. How do you do that? You get because extra... you can't express an asterisk. That, yeah, I, well, I think that <laughs> is that the, like you know people want the sarcastic. You would have to wink with Twitter. your voice. How do you wink with your voice? Yeah, that's what I've been asking for years. I think I think that's a sarcastic voice. I think you're onto something there. It's like it's football time. You mm. know, it's like you know, not really. Or is it more of a question? Okay, it's, it's football, football time. Well, we do have uh, preseason games tonight. Uh, some teams playing their starters. Other teams made the decision, like Tua and Big Ben and Kyler. They're not playing in the final preseason game. So it's been a mixed bag of teams getting players out there. I know Cortland Sutton's supposed to be out there for the first time. Ooh. Uh, so it'll be interesting. We've got the regular season just around the corner. I know Mike would – Bench. He would take the Sean McVay approach. He would not play any players in preseason. What would you do, Andy? If you were a head coach, would you prefer to not put your players out there for risk of injury in preseason, or to put them out there and get reps and be prepared? Because I know where I stand. Yeah, but I, I don't know where you. Guess do. I hadn't hadn't thought about that. Like you see, Andy Reid, like he's always played his players in the preseason just as part of his habit. I would probably get them out there for. I'd probably. Now that we have a three-game preseason, I'd probably get him out there for game two for a half, and that'd be it. I'm, I wouldn't play him game one or game three. Yeah, game three, I would not play any starters, but I'm I'm good with the – have the guys go through the motions of get start building up that, you know, the routine, get guys locked back into their former routines of getting ready for the game, the stretching, all of that adrenaline building up go out there take a series but i'm not playing them much longer i'd play that. my starters all four quarters every game and i'd bet i'd bet hard on that preseason i just i just go out there and smoke these fools yeah if i could guarantee no injuries i would do that that'd be fun and you have all these you know uh, inter-team practices and things now which That's i have, true. have to imagine takes the level of training camp up a few notches. Yeah, I would imagine if two teams are practicing against each other, your odds of injury there are significant or similar to some preseason. For sure, games. but I, I think what's happened, and this is becoming more and more common, and, and I've, I've heard reports of this, is that they actually value those more because a lot of times you're, you're playing a team that you're not going to play that year. You can actually – you you don't you know in preseason you go out and you do a vanilla offense right. you don't want to give them tape to see but in those practices against a team that you're not going to face this year unless you know obviously if you're you know getting deep into the playoffs then you go oh I, let's install our offense let's try our plays let's do this and unless you're doing one of those inner team practices with Bill Belichick because you know he's throwing oh, he's that, taping that he's thing. throwing that film up on offer up that, sure. that afternoon <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> We have a mock draft episode today, the final mock draft. Username, definitely not Bill Belichick. Right. Yeah, and it's not expensive to get that tape. Uh, we've got our final mock draft today, head to head to head. We pulled our draft spots out of a, what is it called, Jason? Hopper. It is a hopper, I believe. A golden hopper? Yes. And uh, I'm in the that's fifth. What he, that's the way he chases down in that nerd book. Uh, oh, you're, you're doing a Harry Potter joke. No? All right. 
<laughs> that was that was too far for you. Well, what it was? wasn't a very good joke. That's I, what we. I thought it was excellent. Yeah. You're talking about the. Um, I don't even know what it's called. What's the little golden Wait, thing? Wait, you're they, not a nerd anymore? What's the thing they chase in? Uh, oh, you're talking about the snitch? The yes. snitch. What does that have to do with this joke? Just that it's gold? Yeah. See, okay. that's why I that said was, it's a bad joke. Yeah, that was just. At least that was cricket. It's you on, just revealed yourself. That's a nerd. It is Friday. <laughs> Foot Clan Friday. couple things first of all every week we give away an item from pristineauction.com today a calvin ridley signed jersey goes to one of our supporters on patreon Clearly adam adam fan. gaze is finally fired is his name so congratulations you win a calvin ridley signed jersey uh every week like i said throughout the season foot clamp friday a giveaway for a supporter at join the foot.com if you want to get in on some of that sweet sports memorabilia action, you can go to pristineauction.com and use the code BALLERS. Jason, what you just witnessed with that kind of awful, disconnected attempt at humor by Mike was the result of his joke immunity that he feel like he acquired mm -hmm. yesterday on the show. Yeah. When the shark phone situation, we'll call it, took place, Mike essentially got to get out of jail free card for the next six months. I'll give it the next six episodes. So you're good here. Okay. I'll take it. <laughs> uh, if you want to join our community, it's jointhefoot.com. How many do I get per show? Oh, you get unlimited. Oh, so you're, okay. you're, you're good. You're good right. to ru you can ruin this show all you want. <laughs> He's like, and I will. Pity, I was, on, pity on the track, I, man. I was going to do it anyway. Right, so. right. Uh, now you just have permission. <laughs> Uh, so megalobowl.com if you want to get in the largest fantasy football tournament anywhere. It's 9,000 plus of you that are inside oh. the Megalobowl right now. Oh. And if your draft is this weekend, don't wait any longer. The Ultimate Draft Kit is available. We've just made upgrades. I will tell you right now, the app has had the ability to mark players, draft players. Um, we just added that to the desktop side. So if you have not been in there today, Go check it out, ultimatedraftkit.com. You can mark players as drafted. If you want to mark all your keepers off so that your rankings don't have the keepers, uh, it, all that functionality is available on the web now. Remember who you want to target late yes. in draft yes. and remind yourself of players you don't want to draft, things like that. Yeah, and we have our League of Record draft on Sunday, so looking forward to attempting to match Mike in total championships. Mike, mm. I, I'm going to just come out and say it. You have three. I do. And it bothers the crap out of me. I because you've it made bothers. it miserable for all of us. Look, when when you're the three-time champion, the only player in the league of record who has reached this pinnacle, you call I'm yourself, sure it bothers a lot of people. You call yourself Triple X now. Yep, I do. Which you've been waiting for the <laughs> opportunity to do. I've People have always said I have like a lot in common with Vin Diesel. You're both short. And I couldn't fully prove it. We're both just so swole. Right. We're the leaders of like really popular Overrated. franchises yeah. yeah double x that's just <laughs> that's, that's just overweight <laughs> you know what i mean it's like ah, i'm a double xl uh, i got a big shirt but now now you're you're risque so yeah that's true congrats on your three championships <laughs> thank you into the news we go news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper This does feel like a Friday show, doesn't it? <laughs> All right, Jameis Winston has been named the starter for week one. We have an answer to the question. Mr. Payton, thank you. Now, thank you. whether he'll be able to maintain that role, we'll find out. Whether or not he'll give up some of that goal line like Drew Brees does to Taysom Hill, we'll find out. But Jameis Winston named the starter. The UDK, we we updated it after what we saw on the field on Monday night. We had Jameis in there. All of us have him between, I think, 19 and 24, somewhere in that range. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see what happens in New Orleans. But this is, I will say it brings a, a newfound optimism to Alvin Kamara in particular, where, you know, Winston is more prototypical at the quarterback position than Taysom Hill was. And the offense was built through a lot of checkdowns and, you know, Jameis would do well to get the ball to Alvin Kamara because he is just a safety valve and a way to avoid turnovers and keep the chains moving and 
And so I'm encouraged by the opportunity Kamara will have with Jameis. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, uh, they might bring Taysom in on a goal line package here or there, but they could do that with Latavius Murray or Jones or, or you know, Alvin Kamara is not going to get all the touchdowns, but now he is going to be the, the primary goal line um, option for them as well as that check down guy. So I, I view now Alvin Kamara as equal to Dalvin Cook in my personal rankings. I think it's, I, you know, without Michael Thomas to start the year, the the absolute vacuum of targets that there's just nobody to throw the ball to there. I think Alvin Kamara is going to start the season on fire. Some context for the Sonny Michelle trade coming out from Sean McVay talking about the deal. Said he wanted to make sure they had somebody else that's played in some big-time games. Obviously, Xavier Jones as the backup to Daryl Henderson did not fit that. Said Daryl's going to have a very big role. Okay. Don't really change the outlook for him. Doesn't no. really change the outlook for him. And the goal is to get him ready and have him be a big-time contributor in week, week one. one. Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's interesting news coming out for the head coach saying that his role won't change. Uh, we don't know what, quote, a very big role is. I mean, is that a – Like a Kaiser. Is that a – ooh. Is that a Todd Gurley size role? Is that just no? Well, that's what I'm saying. That these are things we don't know yet. I mean, this is this is borderline meaningless to me. This is you just traded for a running back, and you're wanting to tell the guy that was already there, hey, you, we still have plans for you. You are still a big part of this team. We love you. This is not an indictment on you. We're just getting we're just getting depth here. But the reality is, Sony's going to come in here and carry the ball more than a hundred times, and that's going to change the role that Daryl Henderson had for sure, regardless of whether Sean McVay says, well, we're still going to give a big role to, to you, Daryl. Darnell. <laughs> I, I had Xavier Jones statted for about 100 carries. So do you feel like Sony just replaces all that opportunity for Xavier Jones, or is there a, a total atrophy of his workload? Yeah, so I, I did replace the majority of Xavier Jones, but I, I have uh, Sony coming in and having – you know, significantly more volume yeah. than Xavier Jones yeah. had, so it 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 eats into Daryl Henderson. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, some some positive injury updates to get to before we get into the mock draft. Uh, Kellen Moore said Dak Prescott is looking great during Wednesday's practice. Mike just did a fist pump. That that's very positive, very exciting news. Uh, yeah, it's great. Saquon felt good on Thursday. Returned to live drills. Didn't feel hesitant. Hated wearing a non-contact jersey. Will not be playing, though, in the final preseason game. Aaron Jones says he'll enter the season healthy after dealing with a camp string injury. So that's good news. And then I'd seen that Odell Beckham's doing 11 on 11s. He had not been – we haven't talked about it a lot, but he had not been doing a lot of work in practice, something I wasn't even aware of because no one was talking about it. But he is starting to get some work in. Otherwise, I don't think we have any other news. Anything new breaking this morning, gentlemen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, let us know. I like I like how he puts it. Not yet. It's fair. Yeah, it's has, fair. Has Trey Lance been named the starter? That's oh, that hasn't come whoa, out yet, right? Whoa, We're still whoa. waiting. I do okay. think it's coming. I do. And I was I mean, all off season I was trust trusting the Kyle Shanahan statements about Jimmy G, but then you get games and then you get practice and then you get to see it. And like what jumps out to me is you have the better chance of having a special season with Trey Lance. Yes. You're in a tough division. You need a differentiator. Jimmy's probably not that. And you you need a secret weapon against the Rams and the Seahawks and Cardinals. Trusting Kyle Shanahan to me is is like the equivalent of trusting Loki. Like, every once in a while you can. Loki does. I mean, he started telling the truth a little bit in that series. But most of the time he's a trickster. He is the god of mischief. So... Well, and, and and injuries have just been a problem for the 49ers, even at the quarterback position. So we'll see what happens. I would bet on Lance being named the starter. Is that where you're at, Jason? I am 51-49 in favor of Garoppolo right now. Um, I know the entire offseason I said Lance will be the week one starter, and it is getting more and more likely. Uh, but it, it it's it's tough. It would be really hard to bench Gar I almost feel like you have to cut him. Uh, but that's not best for the roster because it's good to have the depth in case of an injury. That's why I think if he's on this team, he'll probably start week one. But it is close. It's it's close enough right now where um, I saw some some sports books were taking that bet down. Right, the the bet of who would be the starter Correct. week one. 
it is certainly easier, whether it's Chicago or San Francisco, to start with the incumbent. And then once you lose, you can make the transition and that player can become the backup. And there's like a reasonable cause for it. It's a lot harder to start Trey Lance and then you get off to a rough start. And how do you shift to Garoppolo Mm -hmm. and then have to shift back to Lance later? I mean, that is just a psychological battle. I would presume if Trey Lance doesn't start week one, which at this point I'm not I'm not fully projecting that he will. I think Garoppolo will be that guy. But look at the Dolphins last year. They had a, a plan. That it wasn't a public plan, but they had a plan clearly for Tua that said as soon as that bye week hits, it doesn't matter where this team is at. Tua is going in. Like They were on track to be a playoff team uh, with the way that they were going, with Ryan Fitzpatrick playing pretty well. And then that it was a very shocking thing for the fantasy football world, for the football world, that it was two is going in. We don't care. So I would imagine that San Francisco has a hard line at some point that says that Lance is going to start by this week. And uh, I think for fantasy purposes, there's a lot of excitement for Lance. But, yes. And he's shown some otherworldly arm talent, things like that in preseason. But there's been bumpy moments as well, rookie moments. Oh, yeah, of course. So it, it'll be interesting. That'll be it for today's news and notes. Brought to you, as always, by Sleeper. They got their new web app out there. If you're stuck on some old fantasy platforms, make the switch over to Sleeper. Number one in Dynasty already. Uh, we're wrapping up our Family League draft in there, and we're about to do the Listener League draft. We, and the Megal Bowl is hosted on Sleeper. Yeah, poke, so. poke your league and see about switching just, this year. Just poke them. Just, yep, just right in the ribs. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's get into the draft. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. All right, mock draft time, also on Sleeper. I have the fifth pick. Jason has the eighth pick, and Mike... The lucky rascal gets the 112 on the turn today. Which means Team 11. Me, me and Team 11, we meet again. Yeah. This is your this is your chance at I'm redemption. I'm getting revenge. I mean, this is your chance to steal Team 11's players. Yeah, your nemesis, Team 11. You're going down, Team 11. So let's kick this thing off. I look forward to destroying you two gentlemen in this mock draft from the five spot. Calvin, uh, Calvin McCaffrey, yes. <laughs> Christian McCaffrey goes one, Dalvin Cook two, Derrick Henry three, Kamara goes four, and uh, five. I am very comfortable here with Ezekiel Elliott. He, uh, I would take him at this point in a half PPR, full PPR. It'd be really hard not to take him over Derrick Henry. Yeah, I agree. I agree that Cook and in Cal, uh, CMC and Kamara are the top three. Yeah, that's that's where I am too. He's my four. I, I find that if those top three have gone, I am taking Ezekiel Elliott over Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry not catching passes, coming off that workload, that's tough. Now, after you selected Ezekiel Elliott, Nick Chubb went and Saquon Barkley went. I am up at pick eight. It's a very interesting spot to be in drafts this year. Yeah, it is. And really, pick eight is one where I either um, really hate it or I'm okay with it depending on two <laughs> players. Two oh, players okay. alone, and that's Ezekiel Elliott falling there or the other player that I hope falls there who did, which is Aaron Jones. I view mm. Aaron Jones as a great option this year. I mean, he's been a top five running back the last two years. Aaron Rodgers is back. Jamal Williams is gone, and I, I, he's worthy of a pick in you know uh, in the first round. A couple of things real quick. It's a half point, 12-team mock. You can follow along on YouTube if you want to. The uh, draft board from Sleeper is up there. That's youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. And I'm going to tease something really quickly. And I'm not going to say much, but I highly recommend that you go to YouTube, you subscribe, and you click the bell because oh yes. some, something is going to happen over there soon. And that's all I'm going to say. There's mm-hmm. ripples in the water. Yeah. Click the bell. Yeah. You want to know when things are happening. Uh, Mike, you are on the clock. Jason went Aaron Jones, then Jonathan Taylor, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams. Now, Jason, had Jones gone at seven, would you have passed on Barkley there? I would have passed on Barkley. It would have been between Jones's teammate, Devontae Adams, or the tight end, Travis Kelsey. Mike, you are sitting at uh, 112, two picks, and two decisions to make. 
Yeah, I know one of them. Uh, my first pick is extremely easy. This has uh, kind of clarified for me over the preseason that if I'm in the if I'm on the turn here, I got to turn and burn. Najee is one of my picks. Like I, that's really locked in for me. The difficult thing, though, is being so far away from my next picks. Do I take the advantage of Travis Kelsey, or do I take one of these remaining top? running backs because I know that by the time we get back to me, they will be gone. Yeah, you're gonna have a long wait. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the the R B R B strategy here. So I'm gonna take Najee Harris and then I will follow that up with my champion, Antonio Gibson. Now that's interesting. I thought you might go Eckler there instead yeah, of he's, Antonio he's Gibson. He's in consideration. The uh Gibson is to me is riskier than Austin Eckler. But he's for floor. But when it comes to ceiling, I mean, we just had uh, Awesome Excellent himself on this show, and he didn't come out and say he's not going to get the goal line carries. Buddy! But buddy! <laughs> he didn't not say that right. as well. Seems like he is expecting that that will not be a primary part of his role. So that when it comes to true ceiling, I'm going to shoot for it here with Antonio Gibson. All right, after Mike went Harris and Gibson, which I'm glad you didn't go tight in there just because that's been experimented in several of these mock drafts. Yeah, and that was that was part of it too. Let's see what happens. Yeah, and so uh, obviously Harris and Gibson are a great stack. Eckler goes next, then Hopkins and Kelsey taken one pick before Jason. <laughs> Super sad about that because – That would have been yeah, if, if you pretty can, amazing. If you could start at the eighth spot and get Kelsey in the second, that is an auto pick, but one spot – ahead of me now I'm looking at either wide receiver or running back at wide receiver it's basically Stephon Diggs maybe Calvin Ridley there at running back there are still some guys that I absolutely love um, and there is one that is a true three down back with no competition for touches I have been lowering I him since the beginning of the offseason but it's really, really, really difficult, statistically speaking, when you stat this team out, for him to not have a great year. I mean, injury, sure. But outside of that, I think Joe Mixon just really, you know, it's the Najee yes. argument. Najee's going to have so much work. He's going to be on the field so much that it's just like he can suck. He can actually be bad on the field mm -hmm. and great for fantasy. And, and that's kind of how I feel about Joe Mixon. So I'm stacking Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon together. So the the Samaje P. Ryan beard picture has not instilled at least a little bit of fear. No, I mean, we've had Bernard's, a, uh, m you know, mustache the, before. The well, mustache. was the mustache responsible for the mixing injury is what we all want to know. <laughs> now, okay, okay. Now, is the beard going to, you know, take out an ankle? Maybe. That could happen. That's a ferocious beard. It looks it's a little fake. dangerous. It, it looks fake. It's that's like, how great it is. What if it, it was? <laughs> what if he's just, he's always wearing a hat to cover the strap. <laughs> that is on the back of his head. It looks like a solid object. Like Yeah, I mean there there has to awesome. be you know there's an awesome beard. There are a number of men that just the, the facial hair doesn't ever kind of come in and at least some of them in the world have to have worn fake facial hair <laughs> to compensate. <laughs> Somebody out Someone there. Someone has yes, to. Yes, definitely. Uh all right, before I make my pick, by the way, I'm heartbroken because I had like mental this is a great moment in a mock draft, you know, to be doing this on the show because Jason was going Mixon. I thought he might go Clyde. I'm not as high on Clyde edwards alaire as Jason is. So I had mentally said, well, I'm going to take whoever's left of Diggs and Ridley. I'm going to go. I really wanted Diggs to fall to me. It was close. Diggs and Ridley went right after Jason before my pick. So I have a decision to make momentarily. I hope you listen to Jason's tip from the, the, mm -hmm. the Tips and Tricks show where he said, fill the queue yeah, so well, you don't tilt. Yeah, my queue's empty. We'll, we'll walk through that in a moment. <laughs> Um, we want to thank today's sponsors as we continue this mock draft. Head and Shoulders, we want to thank them for supporting the podcast. Their scalp shield technology is never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. We had the never not working segment on yesterday's podcast. We were looking at the safety, the safety dance with fantasy wide receivers. How confident can you mm -hmm. be that they're going to deliver for you in fantasy drafts? Because we want to be never not working. We want to be stepping up our game this year so we can take home a Foot Clan title. And I want to be safe from dandruff, Andy. I have used head and shoulders for years and years. Uh, if you have sensitive skin, if you have you know, dandruff issues, if you deal with dryness. In Arizona, 
it's being dry. in Arizona, you deal with dryness. And uh, every time you use it, you're renewing that protection with every single wash. So you can get up to 100% dandruff protection. That is never not working, just like all of us fantasy football players. With head and shoulders scalp shield technology available at walmart.com, you need the shield for for up here. Yeah. Well, you know what's rough? What's rough? Dandruff. Mm. Okay. okay. Oh, that. Oh, see, now. Man. I'm back, baby. Oh. I'm back. <laughs> yeah, but it's amazing what you take pride in. All right. Oh, I'm getting a rating on that joke. Um, I thought it was um, a four. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's generous. Yeah, no, it was. It's just tough, below average. Tough crowd. Tough yeah. crowd. And hey, new FanDuel fantasy players, your day is about to get 20% better. Start playing fantasy this football season, and FanDuel is going to give you a 20% bonus on your first deposit up to $500. That's a big time bonus up to $500. And all you need to do to claim it is make your first deposit. When you're playing on FanDuel, you can set a new lineup for every single week. You don't get stuck with the injuries. That's part of the uh, the allure of it. And it's a perfect complement to your season-long leagues. You get to set that new lineup, like I said. And there's a bunch of other game formats as well. Single game where you set the lineup and you watch one game. It really enhances the, the fun and excitement of that island game. The main slate where you're playing all the games. Best ball, snake draft. And you can play private contests with your friends Experience season-long wins without the season-long waits. Sign up today at FanDuel.com slash FFF to claim your bonus and start playing today. That's FanDuel.com slash FFF. Age and location restrictions apply. Bonus issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires after 30 days. All right. Any more ad reads to delay this decision? Any more? <laughs> do we have Brooks? Can we get a sponsor on the phone? I'll no? see what I can do. Okay. Call somebody. Uh, Look, I I don't want to take Clyde here, and so I'm not going to really? do it. No, I'm not. Okay. Because I am I am equally comfortable with a number of other running backs as my RB two. I'm comfortable with Dobbins as my RB two. I'm comfortable with Montgomery that I can get later. I am comfortable with Carson, and I do not see the ceiling that uh, you guys do with Clyde this year. So I am going to make the decision to stick with the wide receiver position. I'm not going tight end. I'm not going quarterback. And I'm going to take the, uh, a top five talent, somebody that can go out and deliver you weak winning performances. I'm going to take them for the first time in a mock this year, DK Metcalf with my second round pick. So Zeke and DK Metcalf are the first two on the roster. Clyde went immediately following my pick. Good yeah, pick. Team four celebrated. Uh, George Kittle, A.J. Brown, and Patrick Mahomes finishes the second round. Uh, McLaurin, Waller, Montgomery, Justin Jefferson, and I am back on the clock. So looking at the running back position, I said I'd be comfortable with Dobbins. Uh, Carson's there. Uh, Swift is there with the bump in the road to start the year, which will probably get Swift moved down a little bit. Like yeah. We had somebody who had a trade lined up to acquire – Swift and yet missing the one game blew the whole trade up which is surprising because it was a dynasty league you wouldn't expect it as much there uh, but I do think in a redraft when you're on the clock it's hard to take Swift if you if you look at the recent comments it's you know we, we hope to have him ready for week one but the the coach was saying but how much work can we give him like yeah he was saying they're going to ease him in so I, I don't know that you want to if he's active week one I don't know that you really want to start him or not I think they might ease him back in now, Andy, while you were going through uh, the, the monologue, the explanation of you're comfortable <laughs> with these these other guys at RB2, I felt like you, all you were saying is, I'm comfortable taking David Montgomery as my number two, and he went. So now how, now how do you really feel? I have a long wait. I'm in the fifth spot. After this pick, I got to wait a long time. I got to go through four picks from you two gentlemen, and the running backs, they're going to thin out. So as much as I'd love to take a Keenan Allen or an Allen Robinson or even a C.D. Lamb here and pair him with Metcalf, and those two are probably going to win weeks by themselves, I'm not going to do it. I don't think I'm going to get the kind of running back two that I need. So I will take J.K. Dobbins here. Okay. Uh, the guaranteed volume on what I think will be the best rushing attack in football. So I will go with Dobbins over Swift, over Carson uh, in this mock draft and see how it feels. 
Allen goes next. That would be Keenan Allen, not Allen Robinson. And then DeAndre Swift at pick seven in the third round. Jason Moore has Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon on his roster and has a decision to make here in the third round. I have a decision that I have faced many, many times uh, so far because I feel like when you are in the middle of the draft, it is very often uh, – th this is the spot where in the third round I hope Darren Waller falls. Um, if you've been with us for a lot of the mocks over the offseason, we've pretty much every single mock, even in our head-to-heads, we were able to grab Kelsey Kittle and Waller on our three teams once. We've been pro grabbing one of the stud tight ends, mm -hmm. but none of us get one um, in this last draft. They all went to other teams, um, and I'm sitting here deciding between Allen Robinson and CeeDee Lamb. Um, Which my, we talked about in the studio yesterday as how both players feel for your team. Exactly. Uh, C.D. Lamb is more risky, uh, but has an unknown ceiling that could be a top five. Allen Robinson is very safe, very secure. You know he's going to have 150-plus targets, and he's been a back-to-back -back wide receiver one, but he probably doesn't have that upside. If I'm sitting where Mike is sitting at the turn, I'm hoping for someone like C.D. to drop to me. But when these two guys are there, I have – I know CD's a, a my guy and I love him, but the security of a guaranteed wide receiver one uh, is a little bit too much for me to pass up. So I'm looking volume here. Joe Mixon, Allen Robinson, um, and Aaron Jones, that they, they strike me as a very solid core to a roster. So I'm going to lock that like up as a my redwood. top three. Your team looks like a redwood. The trunks <laughs> are strong. Uh, after Allen Robinson goes Mike Evans, Miles Sanders, Chris Carson. If Mike had gone Kelsey, if Mike had gone wide receiver, I feel like the running back position has really thinned out, which is what you were expecting. You would have been looking at Jacobs or Henderson having Sanders and Carson go right before you. Yeah, the Carson pick would have been mentally – defeating if, if if I saw Carson falling and then he went right before me that would have been a big draft tilt so as of right now all three of us have a pair of running backs Mike your third pick and fourth pick what are you gonna do so the wide receiver I'm looking at the wide receiver position here because I'm not gonna force one of these what I consider to be the dead zone running backs Jacobs Hend Henderson could be fine Gaskin could be fine and Mike Davis like all of those guys could be fine but I'm I'm pretty locked up with some running back volume with Najee Harris and Antonio Gibson so I'm going to shoot for some ceiling here at the wide receiver position Jason was correct I will take CeeDee Lamb with one of my picks and then with my other one it's I don't think I've I've harped on him nearly as strong this year because I was uh I was all in last year, and I'm still all in. If you look at my projections, this guy is, is my wide receiver 13. We just need those touchdowns to come. We need DJ Moore to get in the end zone a little bit more. I need Sam Darnold to be a better quarterback than Teddy Bridgewater, which is a risky proposition to be betting on, but I'm going to bet on the talent of DJ Moore. Two, young, uh, two of the young superstars in the making, in my opinion, CeeDee Lamb and DJ Moore. I, I'll i take a moment to talk about my thoughts on DJ Moore because for the first time in my life, in your, life, your fantasy career, I was unzipping my windbreaker and underneath was a DJ Moore jersey. Oh, yeah, yes. baby. And I, I was getting the zipper near the bottom of the, of the oh, jacket. Oh, you were ready to get him. And then Did you all, zip it up? all of a sudden when I got to the very bottom, I was about to like kind of pull it off and, and you know, run really fast, show off these guns and... um. <laughs> They signed Robbie Anderson to a three-year extension, and I realized DJ Moore, like, the money's going to have to be there. And to me, he feels a lot like a player that with Terrace Marshall there, all the priorities of this team, this could be the kind of player that, you know, he – I know what DJ Moore believes about himself. He believes he's one of the best wide receivers in the game of football, and he might be. But if he comes with the juju demands, and then Robbie's been paid and Marshall's there, I am a little worried about a walkaway. Well, we still have the fifth-year option for him, so technically he can okay. be under contract for two years. So the the zipper moved up. It's only a couple little <laughs> zips. I mean, so you, you can, can still see you it. You can see the number, right? But uh, well, so it's, it's a good public announcement. Always make sure your zipper is is, is properly up. 
Right, right. Now, there are players in which the zipper gets stuck, and the jersey just yes. keeps showing. Yep. Carry on was one of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. That jersey, you were trying to get <laughs> that zipper up. It broke no. off, man. Get How do you up. zip it with no zipper? Um. All right, so Mike goes with Lamb and, and DJ Moore. Josh Allen uh, goes next. Josh Jacobs, Chris Godwin, and uh, Jason, welcome back to uh, – to the draft you you have your fourth pick i am very happy to be here i'm happy with the players that have come to me mike i thought for a second that you might go dub my guys go cd lamb tyler lockett on that turn i'm sure he's close to dj Moore. i have they are 13 and 14 yeah um and And lockett i I knew he would not make it back (laughs) right there's no sad well and and that's the another important point for the listeners out there mike's in a position where he couldn't wait for the "Quote unquote appropriate value of Tyler Lockett. He's going in the early fifth. You would have had to take him at the early right. fourth, but you have him ranked so closely to DJ Moore. Like if you had been, I mean, you you got to just take your guy, right? Yes. On the turn, you're gonna you cannot play ADP games if you're at the turn. If you're near it, then you could uh, do great things with your following pick. But on the short turn, so here I am. I'm thrilled that I went with Allen Robinson last round because I have both Amari Cooper and CD Lamb." As top 12 wide receivers, I truly believe both will be top 12 wide receivers this year. Happens every year, and I, if I have to peg uh, which team has the strongest odds to have two in the top 12, it is Dallas to me. And I'm going to take uh, Amari Cooper instead of C.D. Lamb um, and pair him with Allen Robinson, and I, I feel like I'm off to a strong start. Very happy. All right. I have to pick my fourth player. Any ads, Brooks? Any other ads? <laughs> Anything, guys? The UDK. Save me. Um, okay, so I've got Zeke, Metcalf, and Dobbins. Uh, we talked about Julio on yesterday's show. Mike resistantly brought him up as a bust, as a potential bust. Um, other wide receivers available. I could go Tyler Lockett and make, uh, you know, make my your team great. Make my team great, but I'm not going Lockett and Metcalf. Um, not putting both of those players oh, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. roster. Yeah, that's probably a good decision. Uh, Daryl Henderson is sitting there with a do you believe what McVay says or not decision to be made. And Miles Gaskin, again, you, you, you're at the point with running backs where it's what do you believe. It's no longer what everyone believes. It's what do you believe. Henderson, Gaskin, Mike Davis, Edmonds, even Javante Williams and James Robinson, they are all kind of staring you down going, hey, you know. Which side are you on? And I think one of those what side are you on guys will be there for the next pick. So I'm going to take a wide receiver here. Um, Any interest in Adam Thielen? We haven't talked a lot about him. Obviously, he's older, touchdown regression. But isn't that kind of baked into his ADP? He's not being drafted as a, as a top 12 guy. So I, I just want to do your, yeah, to hear your I, thoughts on Thielen. I, I do. I, I look at Thielen here, and he's probably the second player I would take. I'm actually going to go with Julio Jones, though. Um, I have a roster sans uh, Zeke that all players I haven't mock drafted here on the show before. So um, I will go with Julio. I feel like it's a nice bounce. Like, I don't think Julio has the chance to be nothing. I do think there's questions about what the transition will be like, but he may be the target leader. He may be the better player than A.J. Brown. And the offense, the play action, he hasn't got to live in that world with this Derrick Henry highly efficient Ryan Tannehill play action game in a long time. Handing the ball off to a broken Todd Gurley was not that offense in Atlanta. So I'm going to take the shot on him. Zeke, Metcalf, Dobbins, Julio. After Julio went Lamar, Daryl Henderson, Deontay. Um, I'm kind of glad Deontay went because I I didn't want to think about him again on the next pick. Hawkinson, Cup, Thielen, Dak, Kyle Pitts in the fifth round. I'm always interested in where he goes. And then uh, 505, there's Tyler Lockett staring at me again. But I'm going to go with Miles Gaskin. Miles Gaskin off the board oh, here. Oh, the gas man. Delightful flex pick for me. Uh, Lockett goes next, Kareem Hunt. And so Jason on the clock with a fist pump. I'm uh, not sure why. I know it's because it's not because Jamar Chase is there. <laughs> that uh, is correct. <laughs> So I, I'm curious what your fist pump was all about. I Mr. would love, uh, I would Redwood. love to draft Jamar Chase if I could get him in the eighth or ninth. Um, no, my fist pump is I don't because, believe you. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> um, uh, Goodness. My fist pump was looking at 
where I was in the draft and trying to, to plan ahead a couple of picks ago, um, knowing that all three of the main tight ends are off, I am I am starting to warm up with the idea of actually drafting that fifth round tight end. Holy with, crap! Which is either He's, what T.J. Hawkinson or Mark Andrews. Mark Hawkinson Andrews went, is there. Went early, and Mark Andrews is still available later uh. in the fifth round. Um, so I've got Aaron Jones and Joe Mixon. I've got Allen Robinson and Amari Cooper. I could add depth to either position, but I feel like those are such solid players that I am happy to take this tight end here. Um, That's upsetting. Get one of the borderline elites who um, I can lock in, have more roster flexibility because I'm not going to be playing the waiver wire. Uh, so let's let's turn this one into a real league. Uh, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, Allen Robinson. That's upsetting. Amari Cooper and Mark Andrews. Galladay, Michael Thomas. Wait, I'm always curious where Michael Thomas goes mm -hmm. in drafts right now. I was going to bring up Michael Thomas here on the turn of – that I have a foundation that I would be okay taking Michael Thomas, it, it, assuming I have an IR spot that I can put him in and sta stash him, hoping that the injury is – that he's back sooner than later. Unfortunately, I don't – I'm not making that decision. So on the turn here, the running backs, uh, the, the RB dead zone guys, they've kind of moved down where the price is – it's more you – know, Who are you looking at? I'm fine with it. So Mike Davis, Chase Edmonds would be the the top two guys. Javante can, Williams is there. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Because I was really hoping that James Robinson fell back to me here, but he drafted Team 11. Team 11 got him. Right. Is he someone that you would have grabbed at this turn? Would you take him above the Mike Davises, or, or is he behind I him? would not. Okay. I would it had the Mike Davis and Edmonds gone, then I likely would have taken James Robinson here. Uh, but I'm going to take Chase Edmonds on – I think that this price is very fair. He looked like he would I mean, he was the starter. Yes, James Conner is going to get some work. But I'm going to take the chance that Chase Edmonds becomes the guy for this team despite the uh, look there there are red flags here that Chase Edmonds won't be the goal line guy in those things. But in the fifth the back of the fifth round, that's perfectly fine. And then of course, one of my my guys did fall to me, so I will take Chase Claypool and I will stay you're completely just ahead, balanced. Let me just go ahead and cross that name off my list for my next pick. I can't believe you wrote it down. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wasting your, your time. So, Edmonds and Claypool. I thought you might go Javante Williams there. Javante's on the... Because you had the luxury then with the depth to wait for him to kind of break out. He's on the list, but Chase Edmonds is equal-tiered uh, potential breakout running back for me, and Edmonds will see it sooner than later. And more importantly, you have a Chase Chase... Uh, oh, I do. Picks, so oh, I gotta think a of turn. a clever name. Yeah, <sighs> chase the um, turn. Yeah, chase the turn. I like it. Mike Davis, Justin Herbert, and then Raheem Mostert, who I had my eyes on. I didn't want to say it yet because Jason was on the clock first, but we should have updated on Raheem Mostert because he came up on yesterday's show. Yes, like he is fine. Other, his back is fine we, according to his significant other and yes. himself. Whether that's fine in reality, who knows. When you leave the field for a small injury, we see this on Sunday all the time. Someone hurts their shoulder, leaves for a snap or two. Someone hurts their back, leaves, and then they and then they come back, and, and it's never considered an injury. When it happens in practice and then it gets reported, oh, he left the field with a back injury, it sounds scary. But yeah. if he is then fine, he's fine. I, I'm happy to grab Raheem Moster. Obviously, I can't. He went right before me. Um, however... I mean, this would even if he was there. I I love the value in the sixth round of one of my my guys in Brandon Ayuk. Ayukin. So I will uh, go for the upside at my wide receiver three uh, to pair with Allen Robinson and Amari Cooper. Okay, well, the player I thought Mike might take uh, has circled all the way around. So I'm looking at Javante Williams here, considering him. I've already got my kind of. You know, if you want to mentally put in your starting lineup, it's Zeke, Dobbins, and Gaskin in the flex, and then Metcalf and Jones at the wide receiver positions. Uh, you know, other wide receivers of consideration, T. Higgins, if you don't believe that Chase and Boyd are going to make a big impact. you got Robbie Anderson, Debo Samuel, who I, I really like. Um, and you guys are not picking, but I'm going to tell you something I'm thinking about right here because we can we can have the suspense and enjoy it. I'm going to take Javante Williams with the 608. 
and then I'm going to take Trey Lance with 705. What? Whoa! Whoa. What? Yeah, I mean, you have... Holy crap! You have a number of picks off the board here. I know Mike is... Who's my guy? I know Mike is going to be looking at him with a couple of picks at 712 and 801. All are welcome on the on the Trey Lance Express. I just I didn't expect this. Yeah, uh, I'm overwhelmed. Well, now I'm now I might. <laughs> oh, oh no, you said there's no taxi backsies here. Was there the player? genie is out the bottle? I'm gonna do it because I said I'd do it. <laughs> but <laughs> I also there was just one other quarterback in, that I always take in the seventh round sitting there, and so traditionally I would take Brady here. This is an interesting strategy. This is the early round. Trey Lance. Backup. <laughs> no, no, it's not a backup. Well, it could be. I'm saying this could be a week one Here, backup. When, I, when I've when i done mock drafts, I love taking Trey Lance before people expect you to take him. Yes, you Because somebody to. else can snipe him. He's got top five potential as a starter, and you can take any other starter with your last pick. I can take Big Ben. I can take Kirk Cousins. I could take yes. any of those. Patrick. I've seen Jalen Hurts in the second to last round. I mean, I can take any of those guys, and I still believe Trey Lance is going to start week one. And if he doesn't start week one, he's going to start soon. I am fully on board with Mike's, yes, let's go. Mike's perspective let's there. Go. And I'm not willing to let Mike take Trey Lance. Uh, hey, know your league, and if you know that he, you know, he wasn't going to get back to you through another turn through Mike, then do what he you got to do. He was not going to get back. Um, it was going to be in consideration. I don't know if I would have done. But it now that. you obviously have. You, do you feel forced to draft another quarterback then? No. Not so you're fine because, waiting until the day before and correct. picking up Derek Carr correct. off waivers or something like that. Yes, I was going to say I don't have to take one. I probably will take you know, Big Ben or something really, really late, but um, we'll see how it goes. Juju next, Fant next. Jason, you could take you could take the guy that uh, is my my guy. So I'll take Mike's my guy, and you can take mine. <laughs> when, who is that? Tom Brady. Tom Brady. Oh, Tom. Oh, man. yes, yes, yes. Um, I might um, not do that because <laughs> there is another quarterback I am targeting a little bit later, but really it's because of one player who fell to me. I am excited to take this player because I made a joke – uh, earlier this uh, this episode, um, that in the eighth I would be happy <laughs> <Flashback>. to flashback. <laughs> flashback. Can we can we get the tape right? Roll the tape. Uh, that I'd be happy to draft uh, Jamar Chase later if he was at a value, and then you know we laughed about it, had a good mm -hmm. giggle because I've kind of been out on Jamar Chase. Well, I'm going to draft a guy who I've been out on in the entire off season. Um, I have talked what down is happening in this draft? every single time that. Both Mike and Andy have been higher on him, but post the Sony Michelle trade, I actually think Damian Harris is a fine pick. Now this is uh, it, it's very similar. You guys are killing me. It's what very is happening. It's very similar in reverse to what I was saying with with uh, Daryl Henderson. Sony is going to eat into carries, and he was going to eat into carries. To Damian Harris, I think that Mac Jones looks more and more likely to start more and more games, possibly as soon as week one, which means the touchdown vulture of Cam Newton isn't in there. And in the seventh round to get my third running back with Damian Harris, I am fine with it. That's shocking, though, because you had your Robbie Anderson love sitting there waiting for you. So uh, it was because I went um, Ayuk. It, it was because I went Ayuk. I had three wide receivers, two running backs, and equally because the drop that I have in my rankings from Damian Harris, who's my RB31 right now, uh, to my next highest, I believe is Trey Sermon, RB41, uh, was just a little bit too big for me. All right, Tom Brady went next, so you don't get him on the way back. DJ Chark, Dallas Goddard, Mike, you got a pair. This is ridiculous. Like, what? <laughs> you guys are killing me. Uh, I think we're antsy for this season, and we're, we're kind of – I, I, We're experimenting ahead of Sunday, Mike. Uh, okay. Wait, is this like a long con? Are you guys are you trying to get <laughs> my head for gotcha. our draft? That's right. At the expense of the Foot Clan? How Absolutely not. Uh, well, on the turn here, I am happy because there is a uh, pair of rookies that I'm excited to take at this point. Uh, I have, yes, Raheem Mostert, allegedly from a social post, from, is okay but has frequently not been okay already throughout this training camp season and throughout his career, really. So I'm going to take the third-round running back, Trey Sermon, that the, the 49ers picked up. It, even if Mostert is healthy, I think that Trey Sermon has a role on this team, the Tevin Coleman role. It, he could, in fact, be the goal line running back while 
Mostert is the between the twenties guy, and I know that Mostert can house it at from any point of the field. I understand that, but I'm not going to bank on 80 yard touchdowns from Raheem Mostert every single week. And then at the wide receiver position, Devontae Smith from the Philadelphia Eagles. I think that he is guaranteed a tremendous amount of volume. Jalen Rager, their former first round pick, up and down in training camp. They said it's it's gotten better here towards the end. But Devontae Smith, and that that small amount of preseason action was all I needed to see. BMI arguments can go right out the window. This guy was running wide open, and I think that he quickly becomes quarterback Jalen Hurts' favorite target. Devontae Smith followed by three wide receivers, two of which I was eyeballing and hoping and praying. And Robbie, Debo, and Tyler Boyd. And for the record, Robbie would have been in consideration for me, but I'm not going to go DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Robbie was the player I was really hoping got back to me. Stupid Team 11. Scooping up. Aha! Aha! Team 11! Yeah, they got me. They got me this time. Um, and they I, got you with Robinson. Y yes. Um, I don't like Team 11. Um, <laughs> so here's the thing. I, I had three players I was looking at. Uh, it was Robbie Anderson, Jalen Hurts, and Ryan Tannehill. Um, I don't have my quarterback yet. I was going to take um, one of those three at this spot, but I'm looking at the draft board. And every single team, seven through one, has a quarterback already. It's not to say that they won't take a second quarterback, but I'm going to play the game of just saying they've all got a quarterback. Are they really going to take a second quarterback? And if this was a real league, probably even less likely. Maybe Andy's team with Trey Lance might, but I've got two quarterbacks I like there. So I am going to take the gamble and take uh, a player that, I have really liked through this process. Talked oh, about okay. him on yesterday's episode. If I can't get Robbie, I'll take his former teammate, Curtis Samuel. All right. Uh, Curtis Samuel to Jason Fournette and Moss next. I, I'm i done at running back. I'm not going to be drafting. I doubt I'll be drafting another running back. Zeke, Dobbins, Gaskin, and Javante. Uh, so I'm turning to the wide receiver position, and I'm going to take LaVisca Chenault. Upside, second-year yeah. wide receiver. A player I really just like the level of involvement he'll have in the offense. A, um, you know the way they use Debo Samuel in San Francisco, they're going to use Lavisca Chenault. And since Debo was taken a few picks before, I will go with Lavisca. Marvin Jones might not even be 100 percent week one. I think the Travis Etienne injury. Well, if, of course James Robinson, in opportunity wise, his his share goes up. But Lavisca Chenault is that joker that. Uh, the what's the word I'm looking for right jack of all trades jack of all yeah, trades yeah. exactly and I think that Urban Meyer will now turn to LaVisca for those types of plays instead of Travis Etienne yep and uh so Michael Carter goes here any other players of no Jalen Waddle with the ninth uh first pick of the ninth round AJ Dillon AJ Dillon in the ninth is a tremendous value and then Will Fuller like nobody knows what to where to take Will Fuller you haven't got to see him on the field because he's been hurt but this was a top. This was like a top ten wide receiver when he was healthy last year. So yeah, but it's a it's a wide receiver who has historically seen his body break down, and, and his all of his success did come with Deshaun Watson. But his body, we've we've seen him get injured a ton, and then when in that stretch where he wasn't, he got popped for a a PED, and he will not be playing week one because of suspension, and he's been injured all off season. It's it's hard. Worth the risk not, in the ninth. It's though. hard not to correlate those two, but I do agree. In the ninth, it's fine. I have a 14-pick wait for my next pick, uh, so I'm actually going to take a player because I'm worried about a couple of guys coming off and lowering the tier at tight end. So I'm actually going to take Robert Tunyon here and say, and say, hey, what if? I mean, I what if what we saw last year accelerates? What if this confidence and this preseason hype with – Aaron Rodgers just talking up Robert Tunyon and his participation on this team. What if it comes true and we get another double-digit season from Robert Tunyon? I think the upside is there when you're talking about the ninth round, and I have such a long wait, I was afraid of him going. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I, I couldn't uh, – all I saw was Darnell Mooney on the board and, I, and saying you were going to focus on wide receiver, I thought for sure. But I did not realize you didn't have a tight end. And I think you're right. Like Once you get to this round – um, Darnell Mooney might work, but th I, I think you made the right call in the sense that you, there's one or two tight ends late that we, you know, usually target and you got to grab one when you, when you need to, I'm on the clock. My two quarterbacks came back to me, Jalen hurts, Ryan Tannehill. Um, Why don't you just take another chance then? 
Uh, three, I, I, only Mike doesn't have a quarterback. I could, but I'm going to just take my winnings. You know, sometimes yes. you say, uh, one more, let's, no let's win, run it. No win to cash out. Yes, I'm cashing out. So on a per game basis, I think Jalen Hurts might even be better than Ryan Tannehill, but I do still have the Deshaun Watson fears on the season of if he's going to ruin a quarterback in the NFL, I think it would probably be Jalen Hurts. So I'm going to take Ryan Tannehill. And, of course, Team 9 right after me takes Jalen Hurts. Uh, Mike, you're on the clock. Two picks. Mm. Ninth and tenth round picks here. What are you doing? Uh, seeing Ryan Tannehill and Jalen Hurts go back-to-back -back is frustrating. I was wondering if you'd be upset about that. Yeah, because those are my – that's the end of like the, my top ten quarterbacks that I'm excited to draft. Now that, I mean, you took Trey Lance uh, in the seventh round there. So now quarterback becomes a full punt for me. I'm going to fully send that quarterback position. And there's a couple guys that I'm interested in. I'm going to take my tight end because some of these some of these crazy teams are taking their, their seconds, and Jason needs one, although I would project that Jason will take Tyler Higby. I will enjoy my Mark Andrews. Thank you very much. Oh, that's right. Boom, bam! Take, oh, yeah, that feels good. That's such an annoying... <laughs> So mad he drops that you. dirt but, taste. But uh, but this is cashing out for me as well. I'm taking Irv Smith from the Minnesota Vikings. I haven't it, the, he rose for me over the off season, seeing him be more and more involved. Uh, Adam Thielen was my ice player. I'm concerned about the age. It, he'll still be a productive player, but I think that things are starting to trail off for him. And Irv Smith, very young tight end. Kyle Rudolph is out of the way. For Irv to swerve, as they they uh, say on the Twitter, swerve and Irvin. They let Irv. They're going to let Irv swerve, hopefully for this team. And then at wide receiver, there's some really good value picks of Antonio Brown, Corey Davis, and Michael Pittman. I sh I'll be shocked if Michael Pittman is not your pick. It is in fact my pick. I'm okay. going to take Michael <laughs> Pittman. Had, had I not been so secure with my uh, my four wide receivers, loving them with Devonte Smith, then I would have gone with Corey Davis. Take some safe value, some safe uh, uh, safe volume, but I'm going to go upside with Pittman. All right. Uh, it'll be interesting, Mike, because you are punting the quarterback position, but you know that I'll probably take one. Yeah. So we'll have a little square up. A little battle. Uh, Jason, who's your 10th round pick? My 10th round pick, I'm looking between a couple of wide receivers and a couple of running backs. I like Corey Davis. I like Darnell Mooney. Um, Darnell Mooney I probably won't take because I've got Allen Robinson. Don't really want to stack both uh, right. Chicago wide Excellent. receivers. <laughs> <laughs> and at running back, look, I I, I, I think Gus Edwards is, a, is just a yes. steal um, at where he's going right now. He is not going to catch the ball, but he's on a run-first offense. He's a good running back. They paid him. He's going to get used. And if you look at what happened once they kind of moved on from Mark uh, Ingram last year, he was averaging like 10 fantasy points a game. So this comes down to my roster. Where do I need more help? Because I'm happy with Corey Davis. I'm happy with Gus Edwards. At running back, I've got Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, and Damian Harris. At wide receiver, I've got Allen Robinson, Amari Cooper, Brandon Ayuk, and Curtis Samuel. That Curtis Samuel pick means I'm going Gus Bus. Fuel it up. Yeah, I like it. All right. Well, I was going Corey Davis or Darnell Mooney, whichever one fell back to me after this Gus pick. Lawrence and Davis went next, which means I feel good about taking Tunyon where I did. Mooney was in consideration, but the decision I made with him was I can get him later, and it worked out. So oh. I'll take Darnell Mooney at the eighth pick of the tenth round. Higby, Gallup, uh, our first defense off the board. Hardman goes in the eleventh round here. And uh, coming back around to me, you know, the toughest question every fantasy player stares down is like, when do I take A.J. Green? And, um, <laughs> you know, the truth is... is Look, I, would, I didn't want to say it out loud, but I've been struggling since the sixth round Yes, of when do I select A.J. Green. It's a big problem. So I am taking him here. I know that I'm going to be using a defense and probably another quarterback for my final two picks. So this was the last position player of... Uh, note that I, I'm looking at. So, Javante, or I'm sorry. Uh, Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams. I, Jamal next. Williams there in the 11th round. I think that is, that's incredible. He could be the starting running back week one. He could be the just the primary running back week one. And look, if. Could re injure. It, De DeAndre Swift could get re injured. That is definitely, it, and 
in the cards. And if and then Jamal you've got Williams, a Lions running back, yeah, but at least you have some volume. And if Jamal Williams, look, if he gets an opportunity week one and he's and he shows out on the field, I mean, this is a brand new coaching staff. It could boost the faith that they really need to get him even more involved. All right, I am back up on the clock. I'm uh, balanced at wide receiver, at running back, and I feel like I've got a lot of safe options. I don't feel the need to grab, like, uh, Russell Gage is a value here, but he's probably not going to crack this roster. I'm looking for someone who could go nuclear, who could surprise. That means I'm looking at Henry Ruggs or Elijah Moore, one of those two players to truly uh, break out, do something special. Um, it is more common that a year two does it than a rookie, especially paired with a rookie quarterback. So I'm going to take Henry Ruggs here. Okay. Uh, you could choose to go Brian Edwards. Um, yep. Same team, just trying to say who's going to be the actual number two to Darren Waller. And, uh, Mike, you could you could probably go Brian Edwards here. I could, but I had a plan that I formulated, and it has come to fruition. I'm going to take my quarterback. Uh, so I'm looking at NFL Week 1 because I've completely punted. So I'm just – I'm streaming Week 1 here and looking at the matchups. And to me, with the quarterbacks left, the two juiciest ones, Matt Ryan at home against Philadelphia and Kirk Cousins against the Cincinnati Bengals. I think both of those are – Solid that options. Irv Stack. I could take the Irv Stack. That is that, that is a good point. But I'm going to take Matt Ryan uh, against the, the Philadelphia Eagles. And Andy took Trey Lance, but I will take Justin Fields, who also – he does not have the same upside to me as Trey Lance, but once he gets on the field, he has quarterback one. He has top ten upside. Now, one thought could have been to go Zach Wilson there, too. Because you know you're going to see him week one, or uh, and roll the dice. Yes, you could definitely roll the dice. I am, I am, I don't want to start him week one. I want to see that first. I want to see Zach Wilson play an actual real set of NFL starters and see if he looks just as good. All right. All right, I'm on the clock. My last positional pick, um, I went wide receiver last round. I'm going to go running back here, and I'm taking a guy that I think could surprise. I am. I don't have it projected that way. Um, in, the, in the 12th round? <laughs> but I, I do think that there is a world. Oh, I love it. Where Sony Michelle is actually very involved. It becomes the goal line guy on a, on a strong offense. In the 12th round, I'm going to take the shot on Sony. No, I love that pick. I'm going to take my week one starter if Trey Lance doesn't start here with my last positional pick. It's Kirk Cousins against Cincinnati in week one. Very cozy with that matchup. And uh, that's it. We're we're on to defenses. So how are you guys feeling about uh, your rosters? Well, let me read what, uh, read off what I got here. At running back, I have Najee Harris, my champion, Antonio Gibson, Chase Edmonds, and Trey Sermon. I'm feeling pretty confident with that. Chase or uh, CeeDee Lamb. DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, Devontae Smith, and Michael Pittman at the wide receiver position. Big Irv Smith is my tight end. And then Matt Ryan will stream while I wait for Justin Fields. All right. Uh, Jason, I'll read your – you want me to read your roster off? Sure. All right. Uh, Aaron Jones, Joe Mixon, Damian Harris, nice pick in the seventh round. Gus Edwards yeah. and Sony at running back. Allen Robinson, Amari Cooper, Brandon Ayuk, Curtis Samuel, and Henry Ruggs at wide receiver. Uh Seemingly steal in the fifth round with Mark Andrews, Tannehill at quarterback, and uh, looking pretty good. I am thrilled with how it worked out. Zeke, Dobbins, Gaskin, Javante Williams, my four running backs, Metcalf, Julio, Chenault, Mooney, A.J. Green at wide receiver. Ended up with Trey Lance, the shot in the seventh round at a top quarterback. Kirk Cousins will start for me if he can't, and then uh, Tunyon at my tight end position, a pick that I know Al Borland had great adoration for being the Packers fan that he is. You feeling, Wait, feeling good your, about that pick there, Al? Oh, yeah. You got the tight end one late. Your projections, <laughs> your projections of, of Tanyan versus Higby. Uh, yeah, they're, they're, I think they're back-to-back -back in my okay. rankings, but I just wanted to try something different here. Yeah, Hig okay. Hig okay. I, I want to keep people on their toes on this show, and Jason was doing that with Damian Harris over Robbie and things. So, Well, he made a great pick there. All right, that is going to do it, unless there's something else, Brooks. Any other news breaking? Nope. Any other starters declared? Any Trey Lance news? It would be great timing for uh, me. Nope. 
Okay. All right. Well, we'll get these teams out on social media at the FF Ballers on Twitter. You can vote for your favorite. And uh, I want to wish everybody luck heading into a huge mm -hmm. draft weekend. A lot of preparation culminates in a, a big draft weekend. It's this weekend and next weekend are the biggest two of the year. So, uh, and enjoy it. Enjoy yeah, the have party. Have a blast. Yeah. Get, get the ultimate draft kit too. Seriously, not – I mean, obviously it's great for us, but yeah. – it's a good tool. It helps you win championships, build that foundation, and you will feel strong in your draft. And I will say this. If you have the UDK Plus with the Draft Analyzer, please share your teams with us. After this weekend and after next weekend, run it through the analyzer, get your grade, share it with us, tag the footballer that most likes your team. Like when you run it through the Draft Analyzer, you can see which one of us uh, absolutely loves it. So um, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, farewell. That is it for the, the final mock draft of 2021. Unbelievable. We'll have football here soon. We will. Quick reminder, go subscribe on YouTube, and we'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.